Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. So this is going to be the highly, 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 highly requested review video of Homecoming by Beyonce. It's not really going to be a review in uh, my standard format, but I'm more so going to talk uh, about, I guess, like, sort of like maybe a critical analysis of how I felt about it. Um, so it's not going to be in like good, the bad, and the ugly format, really, because it's, I feel like that format isn't really the best way to, to talk about homecoming. So um, I thought there was just like some really interesting themes and concepts that I thought would be a little bit better to talk about in this video. So I wanted to start off by saying that I feel like Beyonce and Solange are doing the exact same thing in very different ways with this highlight on black American culture. Solange, it's, it's very interesting at like, Watching siblings, it doesn't necessarily have to be siblings even, but just in this situation, it's very interesting watching siblings that are artists um, kind of work independently of each other to create things that actually share, that are very different, but share a lot in common in terms of themes. Um, so you had When I Get Home, and now you have Homecoming, right? Like those are kind of flip sides of the same coin in terms of exploring these themes of, you know, you you left home and now you are back right you you left and now you are homecoming you left and now it's when i get home um Solange took, as I talked about in my review video of her album, a bit of a more uh, abstract, um, avant-garde uh, type of approach, which she said that she's doing that very deliberately as she feels like Black women making more sort of abstract and conceptual and avant-garde art, art and stuff that's not necessarily for uh, meant to be palatable for mainstream consumption, which I've talked about in some other videos on Black art um, and consumption which if you haven't seen any of those videos, I'll include uh, links in the description box to some of those. Um, so we have Solange, she's doing it in a way that's not really meant to be palatable for mainstream consumption. It's more of, a, of, an, of an exploration of her ideas about home and her memories about home and her thoughts about Houston and her thoughts about Texas and her thoughts about her, her Southern culture and, and kind of working with these different ideas. Beyonce takes a different approach. She takes a more sort of Beyonce approach, which is something that is a little bit more palatable, something that is a little bit more mainstream, something that is a little bit more, uh, I'm going to use the word appealing um maybe to um the masses or to like more you know larger groups of people and none of that is meant to be a knock on Beyonce because I know people are going to take that as like me saying that like Beyonce's work is like whack or something like that but no it's just it's very interesting to me to see people say that they don't like what Solange is doing or that they don't get it but then to see like these same people love what Beyonce is doing. A lot of you guys have left comments comparing uh, Beyonce and Solange to Prince in the time. And the fact that you have Prince who, who was able to do um, a little bit more, some more, because of his sort of mainstream success, especially with things like Purple Rain and that nature, he had artists that he worked with um, the time and like other associated acts that were able to do stuff that was maybe a little bit more experimental that was maybe a little bit more um you know flying under the radar a little bit more explorative you know so it's very interesting to kind of see this uh, dynamic play out again with Beyonce and Solange sort of in tandem um I really enjoyed Homecoming a lot um for me personally I felt like I don't know I mean like I sort of feel like everybody already saw Beachella in a way so that was like the, I mean, and like Beachella is still like very cool, very great, but like seeing that aspect of it, which is just like a live, like they used to do like, I don't even know if they still do this, but like live concert DVDs, you know, like, oh, see such and such a concert and you buy it and then like you can watch it, especially if you didn't get the chance to go to the concert or if it was like, oh, sorry, my email or if it was like a, a really stellar you know really let me click that sorry a really stellar really well received performance that people want to watch again and again that kind of fell out of favor with the rise of YouTube right because now people just and Instagram as well um because now people just go live while they're at a concert Instagram live <laughs> and it's up on Instagram or they you know they film the whole thing and they upload it on YouTube um, so the kind of idea of, you know, I have to buy a concert DVD has kind of fallen out of favor. I do think that Beyonce has a, uh, the, the, I don't know that if you would call this the business acumen or like Beyonce continues to figure out ways 
to get around the technology. She figures out ways to get around um, the, the musical system as something that is constantly changing and evolving, right? So it's like, it's like, oh, people, people keep leaking songs, people keep leaking whole albums, people keep, you know, um, using these streams in a certain type of way. So Beyonce, okay, well, I'm going to drop albums with no singles. I'm going to do everything in complete secrecy, you know, or, um, you know, oh, now they just upload all the performances and they upload everything on YouTube. So like, concert DVDs aren't making money anymore. Beyonce, okay, I'm going to just like, film the whole thing myself, I'm going to include extras and I'm going to release it on Netflix. You know, figuring out these ways around these systems and these models and figuring out ways to make them work for her, that's a talent that Beyonce has that not everybody can do. Well, you have, and I think that uh, we were just having a conversation about different reasons why Beyonce has been able to sort of, you know, keep her footholds um, as the music industry kind of shifts and changes. And she has an understanding of like, how how to get things in the industry to work for her which i think is like commendable like that's good for her you know she 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 has an understanding she has an understanding um so but for me personally since we've already seen beachella i felt like the most interesting aspects were the sort of exclusive um extra footage so basically the way that the um, that homecoming pans out. It's like two hours and 17 minutes long. It's, this shit is like Lord of the Rings length, which did surprise me the length of it. Um, but I understand because I think the Coachella set itself was like a full two hours. And then she has this additional footage. And I think she even like has trimmed um, some of the performances off. You guys can let me know if that's incorrect. But I was like, gosh, this is long. I do wish it was a teensy tiny bit shorter, but that's just me personally. And so it opens with her um, performing and then it sort of cuts into behind the scenes footage so we see rehearsals we see what was going on in her life at that time you know we see we see um, and then that's kind of bookended and uh, used um, transitioned with poetry with uh, clips of black artists like Nina Simone and, and things like that to sort of link the behind the scenes sort of documentary uh, footage to the actual footage of the concert. Coachella is two weekends. One weekend Beyonce performed more in yellow, another weekend she performed more in pink. So it's uh, cut. I really like the way that it was cut and put together like the creative direction, the artistic direction. There's a lot of like really quick like pink, yellow, pink, yellow, you know, move. Uh, sort of coordinated with the movements and the choreography that I thought was really, really, really great. The artistic direction was um, excellent. And I mean, again, like Beachella was awesome. It was like Beyonce meets Drumline. It had a very strong emphasis on Black American band culture. Um, it had a lot of, um, well, I'm going to get this a little bit more later but it had a really strong emphasis on black american band culture and also multiple meanings of the word homecoming so as i already said previously there's an idea of you know coming home uh in a physical sense in a literal sense going home to texas beyonce is always repping texas she's always repping houston there was also the aspect of homecoming in the sense of uh, historically black college and university HBCU culture homecoming which is like the the predominant you know event of the whole entire year it's the event of the school year if you're in school it's the event of the year if you're out of school if you're an alumna and if you're going to go back I like I didn't go to Spelman for example but like one of my very best friends and a ton of my friends went there people be hitting me up like are you going to homecoming are you going to Spelman I'd be like I didn't go to Spelman and they'd be like yeah you, you you damn near went there you might as well like are you going or are you not going you know like it's 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 an event and this idea of uh Beyonce using her Coachella performance to highlight homecoming as an event in black American culture in band culture she also put the the battle of the bands influence in there she put the you know we we have this event that's the highlight of our year the bands come out they do their thing everybody comes you see people you haven't seen in a while again this is playing around with the idea of the HBCU experience as home we all come home we see each other we have this event it's it's again really all these different ideas and definitions of what is a home and and of black of black people and especially black americans making a home anywhere out of our culture right this is our culture so it is our home which i absolutely loved i'm gonna go ahead and say that in my opinion 
at this point of her career, Beyonce is on like a Michael Jackson level in terms of being a great entertainer. Like, I'm very confused about people saying that like Beyonce can't sing. I don't know where that came from. I find it to be really weird. But even if even if we're not getting into her her vocal uh, technique or ability, which I also think is absolutely up to par. But just in terms of being a great entertainer, like Beyonce can put on a motherfucking show. Like you don't have to like her, cause y'all know like I I had my issues with Beyonce. But like the amount of technical ability that has to go into these shows, what she showed us uh, with the behind the scenes footage, the amount of rehearsals, the number of just moving parts, you know, the number of dancers, the number of, of backup singers, the band members, the live instrumentation, you know, she goes, you know, we have three stages, we have a stage for for the band and we have a stage for the dancers and we have a stage for this and and they're doing these like really intricate formations it's in like a pyramid so you can like see everything and it's just a very large scale show it's a huge large scale show and she reveals in this documentary that they rehearsed for eight months which is wild right and 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 then they did it twice and like each time i'm sure Beyonce being a Virgo, she probably watches the shit and she'd be like, oh, mistake, 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 mistake. But like it appears to us as the viewers, as I'm I'm going to say that it's it's technically perfect. It's perfectly in sync. It's she puts on a show. I've given a criticism to Beyonce in the past and older videos that I have felt like she's gotten almost robotic at times. Everyone knows this is a common um, criticism of Beyonce that she can be a robot in the sense of this uh, pursuit of perfection. Like if you almost like, well, if you've seen one Beyonce show, you've seen them all because they're all exactly the same. They're all going to be the same dance steps, you know. But I would say that Beyonce within the last five years, uh, starting with her self-titled album, opening up more with Lemonade and now even more with uh, Homecoming. Beyonce, I think, has gotten more comfortable in the fact that everything doesn't have to be, you know, a beat and a step and a kick and a this and a that, that she can play around with it a little bit more, that she can be a little bit looser with her movements. And that has made her a million times better, in my opinion. And she was already great so now that it seems like she's able to be a little bit more spontaneous and able to have a little bit more fun with it and able to enjoy it a little bit more and able to work with it a little bit more and not just like perform the steps you know whatever has really elevated her in my opinion as an artist right and I feel again like she's really upper echelon like and especially you have to consider Beyonce's age Beyonce's 38 so at the time she would have been 37 and also fresh off of a pregnancy which is also addressed and discussed in the documentary and she's essentially keeping up with you know people that are in their late teens people that are in their early 20s you know dancers and performers that are at their peak physically you know just because they're younger and she's not only keeping up but she's putting them to shame. That's impressive. That's something that really needs to be um, saluted. She obviously put a lot of work in. She's obviously trying to grow. She's obviously, and again, not just in terms of the technical aspects of, of performing steps perfectly and things like that, but trying to grow artistically, trying to grow creatively trying to explore some different concepts in terms of culture and in terms of, of black American artistry and yet still figure out a way to keep that within her fan base, which is a little bit more mainstream than, say, a Solange, which does need to be a little bit more palatable. Finding a way to sort of make that available to her audiences, is it's a very interesting thing, and I think she's accomplishing it extremely well. And I definitely feel like Homecoming, which she said in the documentary, is really a culmination of her career as an artist, as a singer, as an entertainer, the things that she's learned and improved on and 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 made into this like really, really, really interesting large scale show. I appreciated that Beyonce didn't shy away from talking about the power of black culture, talking about black power specifically, again, utilizing clips of Nina Simone speaking. Uh, I have to say again that I feel like black Americans right now are sharing something of a collective consciousness and the way that we think about ourselves and the way that we think about our culture and the way that we think about the future and the way that we think about our our history and the way that we think about our upbringing and you know what what does that mean to us as a certain type of people 
Um, we see in some of the behind the scenes footage, again, we see them rehearsing. We see Beyonce talking about her upbringing in Houston. We see her talk about how she wanted to attend an HBCU, but she was unable to as a, a child star, you know, and she was in Destiny's Child. So she used this Coachella performance as a way um, to kind of recreate that dream, you know, like I never got to have that experience. I never got to have a homecoming experience. So now with this, you know, performance, I got to have that. And she, and as the person that was in charge, she, you know, made the executive decision and stated, I want a black band. I want a black orchestra. I want black steppers. I want black vocalists. I want black uh, instrumentalists, you know, like going out of her way to do that. And I thought that that was also really exemplary of Beyonce's growth because I remember, you know, eight years ago, the thing with Beyonce, which was commendable then too, was that she wanted a, a all um, woman band, you know, like, oh, that Beyonce has like this all female band and it's like so great. And she's like standing in front of these, um, you know, she has feminists and like six foot tall letters on her in her concerts. You, and those of you probably remember, I have an older video where I'm like, you know, Beyonce calling herself a feminist is like a definitive, you know, political statement and that I would love to see a political statement from her on blackness. And then it's like, oh, she heard me. She did it. You know, she did it. And I think that that represents, again, some of her growth, her emotional growth, her awareness that, like, you're not just a woman, right? Like, these white women, these fucking white feminists and shit, like, they don't have your back. Like, they don't see you the same way that they see motherfucking Tina Fey or, or, or you know, somebody like that. Like, you being black has, a, has an impact. It has an impact on your art. It has an impact on what you're doing. So, like, yes, you might want an all-woman band, but if your band is made up of all white women, like, what are you really doing? I think at some point in her, in her entertainment journey, Beyonce came to terms with that not to say that she realized it like as if she didn't know but I think she came to terms with that and and maybe like when she became her own boss and running the show made the executive decision to like use her influence to push back against that which I think is super 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 cool there were clips included in the documentary from bands performing at various HBCUs real actual bands real battles of the bands which I thought was really cool for her to include as well because you know there's going to be people that have never seen this type of thing before that's going to be on some shit like as if Beyonce just made it up as if she invented it right like oh my god this black band shit like oh my god I mean and people joke around like that I can't believe Beyonce invented like black band culture there's going to be people that really like run with that you know so I thought that it was like nice to include like no like this came from somewhere right because that's also a huge issue once we start talking about cultural appropriation and once we start talking too about the mainstreaming of black american culture and slang and vernacular and dances and clothes and 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 music is that people forget where it came from deliberately very deliberately everybody was just having a conversation about how billy ray cyrus got on this Lil nas x remix it's the exact same song exact same song except now that there's a, a verse from a, a white man on it and now all of a sudden it's country enough now all of a sudden it's back on the charts now all of a sudden it's number one song in the world in nashville which literally is like the quote-unquote home of country where they said Lil nas x is not country where they said beyonce is not country with daddy lessons they put up a big ass sign congratulations billy ray on your number one with old town road right a deliberate erasure of the fact that that's Lil Nas X black ass motherfucking song, right? There's, there, again, there's an erasure. There's a, a collective cultural amnesia about where these things come from. The amount of times that I've heard people say to me, like, well, there, there's no such thing as like black American um, vernacular English. There's no such thing as like Ebonics. There's no such thing as slang. That's, that's youth talk. That's internet talk. That's internet slang. Everybody says on fleek. Everybody says bay. It came from the internet. It didn't just pop into existence on the internet like motherfucking uh, spontaneous combustion, like motherfucking, you know, immaculate conception. That shit came from somewhere. It came from a black person. It came from on fleek, came from a black American woman, right, in Chicago that said that shit on Vine. Went viral, got around, but yet now there's no mention of her. That's that deliberate mainstreaming mainlining and erasure of black americans from the culture that we created right from from these things that we made up and so the fact that beyonce was including these clips especially considering beyonce has been accused of stealing and plagiarism in the past i have to say it <laughs> like again i think she learned i think beyonce learned she really took from her whole career to make 
to make this. And you can see, like, I see where you learned here. I see where you learned there. I see where you learn here. I see where your experience taught you something there. She talks about the importance of wanting to bring our Black American culture to Coachella instead of a flower crown, right? Which is just hilarious to me because if you go back and look at pictures from Coachella in 2015, you can go Google it. Beyonce has on a shirt that says, like, burn your flower crown. And I remember loosely around the time where she did Coachella, her mom, Tina, had said something publicly. Like, she wondered, like, oh, would it be too much for Coachella? Or, like, would people not get it? Or, you know, what would people think? And Beyonce being like, well, I don't give a fuck what they think. I'm going to do what I want to do. And now we get to see more of the thought process behind that with Homecoming. Again, she reveals that there were eight months of rehearsal. There were four months of band rehearsal. There were four months of dance rehearsal. The fact that absolutely none of this leaked also really shows the amount of respect that people have for Beyonce as an artist and also the ironclad NDAs this whole must use. You must not be able to say not a goddamn thing like in writing because... The fact that nothing leaks is amazing. It's it's very cool to me that she was trying to replicate not just the movements, you know, I, I was in band, I was a majorette, uh, which is like a baton twirler, I was like the captain of the majorettes. So not to just like replicate the movements and stuff like that, but to replicate the energy and the feel of a battle of the bands, which she says, you know, she grew up going to and seeing as a child in Houston and that being, you know, the highlight of her year to, to replicate the feel and the energy of, of being at a HBCU, to replicate the feel and the energy of being at a, a party, you know, to replicate the feel and the energy of what these things mean to us in our culture. Um, I think this was a, a very natural progression for Beyonce after seeing some of her previous performances, performances at the Super Bowl. And she's been playing around with these band concepts for a while and wanting to really pay homage to black southern culture which we even saw in Lemonade that was a different aspect of black southern culture that was the black um southern gothic culture now we see the black southern band culture you know I I think it's interesting I just find what she's doing to be interesting in her own way I prefer Solange personally that's just my personal opinion but that's not a knock on Beyonce because I do find what she's doing to be really, 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 really interesting. And the fact that she herself is even considering it a culmination of her entire career up until this point and just following through with a lot of these themes that she introduced three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, six years ago. Um, you know, this being her version of, of a HBCU, you know, of a university experience when she states that throughout the rehearsals, the eight months of rehearsals, you know, they came in a certain type of way, they worked together, they built this thing together, they grew together, that it was, it was like Beyonce, you know, Beyonce University, you know, they felt like as if they were all in this together, having this experience and growing and building something like it really was a university, like it really was a fraternity, like it really was a sorority, the idea that you go somewhere, that place becomes your home, you learn, you grow as a person and you come out of the end, somebody, um, else and somebody better and with this sense of family that you maybe didn't have before and I have to say also that trying to undertake that and represent that um in a large-scale performance such as this and on such a large platform as Coachella is was extremely ambitious and she pulled it off and just so many different ideas and layers to the concept of a homecoming she also talks about um she describes the stage and performing as her home personally which i found to be very poetic she considered it to also be a homecoming as in it was her first uh, performance after her pregnancy with her twins which she reveals was difficult that uh she gained a lot of weight that she developed a lot of um like health issues that after that her twins had to be delivered via emergency c-section that she was concerned that she would never be able to perform the same way again after that that she would never get her body back to a place that it was that she would never be able to have the same endurance on the stage that she once had that she wouldn't be able to move the same that she that she was even I don't want to use the word depressed because she's also spoken publicly about issues with depression, but that she had a disconnect between her mind and her body because she's like, you know, her body is here in rehearsal and her mind wants to be with her newborn twins. That she had to go on this like wild ass diet, no dairy, no meat, no alcohol, no sugar, you know, no fruit, you know, no this, no that, you know, that. And I even want to talk about a little bit um, 
the pressure that artists feel. I'm not going to get too deep into this, but I do think it's, it's because Beyonce even said herself, she was like that she never pushed herself that hard to get back to a place where she could accomplish this type of performance. And she said she would never do that type of thing ever again. And she was like, I understand that I'm not even the same woman I used to be. I'm not the same artist. I have three small children. You know, I, I, I there's things I've changed. I'm different. I can accept that I can move forward as an artist. I think that especially right now, we live in this culture of, of relevancy and are you relevant and are you uh, doing these performances? Are you, especially someone on Beyonce's level, which there's not very many, are you churning things out at a certain rate? Are you, are you putting on productions of a certain size? Are you a certain size? Is your body a certain size? Um, we actually saw some different body types. Um, during Beachella, which I liked and saw them highlighted um, during the documentary as well, which I really liked. But it's just like pushing artists to remain relevant, to remain on top. Otherwise, we have this very fickle um, popular culture and especially social media driven. Beyonce has like a solid fan base that's going to support her no matter what. But just in terms of like the popular culture, everything is driven by re relevance. And to hear her talk about how difficult it was, it's like, should Beyonce have even had to do that? Like, it's it's an interesting conversation. And I'm concerned about are we going to start getting are we ever going to get into the toxicity of this type of environment? Because this is also how you have um, entertainers and artists fucking crack and lose their shit. So I liked that she was honest about that. That was probably my favorite part of the documentary where she's talking about how her pregnancy was really hard, how she gained a lot of weight, how she developed health issues, how she had to work her ass off to get prepared for this performance, how she was very concerned about not feeling like herself, about never being able to to move the way she did previously, to sing the way she did previously, to, to maybe put on um, something of that caliber and then actually coming to the conclusion of like, I don't have to be that, I don't have to be that 28-year-old uh, bitch anymore. I don't have to be that 18-year-old bitch anymore. Like, I'm a new bitch. I'm a new bitch. And I gotta go home to my 50 lem kids. And that's fine. Again, growth. Like, Beyonce showed so much growth. Like, because y'all know, like, I'm really not a Beyonce fan. I, I, her, her last few years of growth as an artist have really won me over. I respect it. Now, I'm a Destiny's Child stand since day one. So since she was in Destiny's Child, there will always be a little spot in my heart for Beyonce. But she's really won me over much more within the last few years with her growth, um, seemingly as a person and also as an artist and an entertainer. She had my goat out here looking vulnerable. Like, I may or may not have, you know, shed a little tear. Like, there's a little part where she's, like, really excited because she fit into a costume that she never thought she would get in to again and she's like oh we have to FaceTime Jay we have to FaceTime Jay and they show him on FaceTime and he's like oh you know whatever whatever and I was just like oh look at the softer side of Hove and y'all know I loved 444 which was also about Jay's growth his maturity as a man as an artist as a rapper as an entertainer as a father as a partner as a lover as a spouse you know and how his marriage and, and fatherhood changed that and they're both very private really so getting a glimpse of, of their interpersonal relationship that's not sort of filtered through all this, like the Carters and the on the run stuff, you know, was really sweet. Like she was really excited when she got back into that fucking costume and showed him, you know, I, I, I people act like they hate them together, which I think is really weird. I legit think that they're like soulmates, that they're able to like work through um, a lot of things and keep their marriage and their family intact. I think that that's cool. Um, and commendable. And it's just, and they've been together for so long. You know, again, there's something that's really interesting seeing, thinking of Homecoming as a culmination of Beyonce's sort of her life, because her career has been her life. She's been famous since she was like 14 years old. So there's something really interesting that happens hearing these songs. And I mean, Jay-Z came out, you know, and they performed a couple songs together. So hearing these songs, the older ones, um, leading into the newer ones, you know, when we hear, when we hear Bugaboo, which is a Destiny's Child song, and then we hear Dangerously in Love, and then we hear you know, partition, and then we hear um, party, and then we hear sorry. We just heard 15 years of Beyonce's life, literally. We just went through 15 years of Beyonce's literal life, right, on stage, which is something that you can't say about too many 
artists and then having it bookended by the behind the scenes footage showing the rehearsal showing the stuff that was going on showing her thoughts showing her inspiration her ideas the fact that she was like the executive producer of the whole show and like I want to do this I want to do this uh viewing them rehearsing in their in their down clothes viewing them rehearsing without even any music and just hearing like the the stomps and the energy and then seeing the choreo you know there's there's so many black American specific lines and and ideas and the fact that she also came out with the live instrumentation album was perfect again I don't know if Beyonce is doing this herself if she has a business manager y'all can let me know but like she got a head for business like she understands business we like to party we like to party it's perfect for band instrumentation they really went through and picked songs that were perfect for band instrumentation to have this accompanying live album, right? And it's just, Beyonce grew. She grew somewhere. I feel like I might have said this previously in other videos, but if I haven't said it previously, I definitely think that Beyonce went from just a, a performer, maybe entertainer, a singer, you know, into an artist which is absolutely, in my opinion, a different thing. Art is self-expression. It's not just a pretty picture or a nice song. It's, 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 Beyonce is expressing things and she's expressing ideas and seeing the ideas behind the ideas in Homecoming is cool. Um, I did not know that Oliver Roustang from Balmain did the costumes. When she said Olivier, I was like, oh, Olivier from Balmain. I uh, love his work, love his stuff. Um, she talked about, and he's like also very intentional, uh, very intuitive with detail. She said every detail had an intention, which made me think of Solange. Do nothing without intention. I don't know if they're coordinating this, if they're doing it on purpose, or if it's just happening. Like, again, they sisters, they're on a similar wavelength. But she talked about the intention of everything that they did, how she designed the use of the pyramid so you could see all 200 of the performers. And just the sheer size and scope of this as a production and the amount of thought that went into it well this um, type of costume would look great this type of light will look good this type of this will look good this type of materials fabric look, would look good but we've also all seen that clip of Beyonce from like 10 years ago being like black girls look like shit under blue light which she would know because she's been entertaining for 22 years so like seeing and knowing how hands-on she is with the I would love to like sit down and like pick Beyonce just like interview the shit out of her and just like pick this bitch's brain that shit would be just so fucking fascinating to me like for real um it was also nice again I'm a DC stan so seeing the amount of DC songs seeing them when Beyonce um Kelly and Michelle like all came out and performed together made my heart very happy I'm still waiting for this Destiny Child reunion tour whenever they want Whenever they want to go on tour, I'm going to be right there. Even though you can't tell Beyonce that she's not Tina Turner. Like, she stands Tina Turner so hard. So much of her. And Tina was like rock. Like rock and roll. And so when you see Beyonce doing like, let it be with the hair. I'm like, this bitch, is, she thinks she Tina. Like, and that's not shady. Like, it's just because I love Tina. Like, I grew up listening to Tina. My grandma was like really into Tina. And it's just like, you can't tell Beyonce she's not Tina Turner. She's had a lot of iconic choreography. Um and costumes inspired by Tina Turner, which is like a great thing because Tina was again just a fabulous, fantastic entertainer and singer and songwriter. And it's amazing to also see Beyonce, you know, watching again this sort of culmination of her career. And it's like, damn, Beyonce's really had a lot of iconic songs. She's had a lot of iconic choreo. She's had she has songs and routines that are still classics. Destiny's Child has songs and routines that are still classics, you know? Her, Michelle, and Kelly still got that chemistry. Uh, Solange came out for Get Me Bodied, and I was just like, Solange is just a radiant moonbeam. Like, Beyonce and Solange could go on tour, and I will probably be with it. Like, I, I really just appreciated the fact that she also shows her family, you know, and she shows Solange's son, Jules, and Solange's husband, and uh, family friends, and people that have just been around for years and years, and the idea that homecoming, again, was like a family affair. It was about being home. It was about going home. It was about Black American culture as home. It was about band culture as home, the stage as home, entertainment. It was just, it was just, it was, it was, I was impressed. I was impressed. I was impressed and I've been hard on Beyonce in the past as y'all know and I was impressed. I was impressed. So go Beyonce. Homecoming. 
Um, again, I loved the the very deliberate way that she talked about black women specifically. I love the, the love that she showed to black men as well. Um, having the, the, the black male dancers. And um, I also like the way that Beyonce plays around with gender, though, like the way that she calls herself King B and, and, um, and, you know, that she's the boss, but she's, she like, I'm, I'm the baddest bitch in the room and I'm the realest nigga in the room. And what you going to do about it? Not a goddamn thing. You know, like I, she got my attention. Beyonce, you got my attention, bitch. You grew on me, bitch. Y'all know I've said that in, in videos before. This whole grew on me. So kudos to her. Um, homecoming. Highly requested video. I know it's going to be so long. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. There will be links to old videos that I've done on Beyonce as well in the description box. You guys can go ahead and check those out along with other links and facts and information and all that good stuff. So, food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.